I want a girlfriend! <laughs> Hello friends and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily Reddit content anywhere on the internet. Promise swearsies, it's just a fact and it's totally science. Get on Google and like, you know, ask us some questions or something. <laughs> I shouldn't tell you to do that, that's, that's manipulating the algorithm according to Google's rules. Please no ban, I like make video. <laughs> Zuka's Gaming Group Tales, The Skeletor Miniseries, Episode 1. Misa, you a girlfriend! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jar Jar, what are you doing here? How would? <laughs> so, <laughs> greetings, salutations, and hello, time-weathered companions, strangers, countrymen, and friends from foreign lands alike. These introspections and talking with my old friends about Burger Beard has spurred discussions of other neckbeard gamers that we've collided with over the years. This one in particular is a very strange case indeed. Ooh, I love the stranger cases. <laughs> For this neckbeard checks many boxes, but one is notoriously absent, namely kilograms in the triple digits. This fellow, dubbed Skeletor, not just for this story, but long so dubbed by the group, is a man who could not have weighed more than like 98 pounds. But as with many such cases, his toxicity was of the spirit. Not even Borax can wash out some stains. <laughs> Dramatis Personae, Skeletor, our beard, the subject of these treatises, and an enigma turned unpleasant presence. A person weighing less than 100 pounds, 6 feet tall, gaunt all over, and had a very unhealthy sounding wheeze. His head is shaped like a sunfish. <laughs> <laughs> his eyes sunken, his upper jaw overbiting to the point that it looked like it hurt for him to close his mouth, and atop an ill-kept mass of stringy brown hair rested, you guessed it, the notorious Fedora. This dude has an ego a mile wide, but is unwilling to put any effort to live up to it. The Crypt Keeper, host of Tales from the Crypt, has more flesh to his hide than Skeletor. There are definitely some skinny neckbeards out there. I'm a little concerned by like the skinniness plus a wheeze. Are we sure he doesn't have cancer before we make fun of him? <laughs> We've got Zuka, OP, Master of Ceremonies, and the guy who ran the majority of the games during the time Skeletor was present. Bad Astovich, the lanky ladies man with more rage than his body knew what to do with, often more disgusted with Skeletor than actually enraged. Dragon, nicest man in the universe, Japanese descended gamer nerd, works at a home improvement store, and has two sons with Ninetales. This is the guy who gave Skeletor his handle. Ninetales, so named because of her kitsune fixation, Dragon's wife, hit on once by Skeletor, rebuffed him, causing him to ask after, well, I guess you'll see. Radio, radio operator in the army, blew out his knee in service to his country and has zero tolerance for shenanigans. Thanks for serving, Radio. Definitely appreciate that. Slumsy, former best friend, ignored Skeletor most of the time because, to quote him, The guy's a non-entity. Wrangler, the shopping cart cowboy, the pusher of brooms, aid and escort to old ladies doing their grocery shopping. <laughs> the man of Shakespearean grade dramatic reactions. Also the guy who, to his great shame, brought Skeletor into our midst. The stage. My first home after moving out from the family house, which was at one point meant to be the parents' forever home. I've been asked why we left. That was me. <laughs> and the long and short of it is that California's leadership hates farmers who aren't part of some huge corporation, so now we're in Texas. At any rate, this was when I was still in California. I'd bought my first condo and couldn't be happier hosting games there. The big table with plenty of chairs, my leather sofa, and the same easy chair that Turtle once used as his nesting grounds. <laughs> All adjacent to the galley-style kitchen on the first floor. Both of the gigantic bag windows offered a splendid view of forested lands that stretched all the way to the ocean over rolling hills. Ah, uh, it's so unfortunate that California leadership has to be, uh, the way that they are. <laughs> California. I used to live there too, bro. I left too, bro. <laughs> I know how it goes, bro. Anyways, the troop is ready and the stage is set. The Skeletor miniseries episode 1, 
The Gun Gun Girlfriend. Star Fox 64 start chime. Good luck. Good luck indeed. I think we're going to need it. <laughs> the game was Star Wars Revised Edition. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't a fantasy flight fan. Sue me. The balance issues have plenty of errata you can find online if you're willing to do a little Google foo. At any rate, the setting was a sort of alternate universe of Star Wars. This was before the sequels. <clears throat> I mean, the Kathleen Kennedy self-insert fanfiction trilogy had come out. Ho ho! Shots fired. <laughs> I'd basically tweaked and twisted a lot of things to keep things fresh and interesting, using my vast knowledge of the expanded universe to build a Star Wars setting that was at once familiar and fresh at the same time. The game began with a group, a Republic Special Operations team, escorting Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker, Jedi Knights, to the Trade Federation flagship after they blockaded Alderaan and requested immediate Republic aid. The Jedi were dispatched to ascertain the situation, and the group was there to act as Republic liaisons. Turns out, the Trade Federation are good guys who blockaded Alderaan after a massive fleet of smugglers, pirates, and Outer Rim criminals descended upon the defenseless and peaceful planet to loot and pillage it. The blockade was established to make sure that these bad guys couldn't leave. So everyone made a pretty unique group of characters. Radio made a female Togruta Jedi Consular, Wrangler made a male human scoundrel, Bad Astovich made a Rodian Jedi Guardian, Slumsy made a male human soldier, Ninetales made a female human noble, Dragon made a male Jawa tech specialist. Oh, Jawa! <laughs> and Skeletor. Dear, emaciated, bespectacled, sandpaper-cheeked Skeletor. Oh, unfortunate. <laughs> he made a male human tech specialist. So is he going to bump heads with the Jawa tech specialist? Hmm. <laughs> but here's the rub, as Shakespeare would put it. He said that this guy was a lawyer, and after his boasts of having been a six-year vet of tabletop games, I made the terrible mistake of not looking over his character sheet. Then again, even if I had, I can't even begin to imagine what could have been done to fix this character. <laughs> so he said, His character was a lawyer, a law specialist, a socially inclined dude who acted as a defense attorney. <laughs> Is that close to Skeletor? <laughs> I think. I mean, props, I guess, for making a character who was not cut from the typical Star Wars cloth, but... It seemed almost jarring. So we were on session six, and the group was searching for Count Maul, a disgraced Jedi who had been leading a crusade to free the Outer Rim from its rampant injustices, and was implicated in the sacking of Alderaan, and they were all in the cantina. Out of the blue, while Bad Astovich is talking to the bartender, Skeletor breaks the silence. A brief note, Skeletor's voice sounds like the dying gasp of an ancient dusty mummy. <laughs> <laughs> who's been snorting asbestos powder and has just made an attempt at the cinnamon challenge. <laughs> That's so specific. Okay, I guess I'll try that. <laughs> I want a girlfriend! <laughs> I slowly look over at him, brow arching. Uh, I hear Match.com is promising. Nah, man! I mean, like, you see... Everyone in the game has a girlfriend, and Radio's character is dating Mr. Skywalker. I want a girlfriend! <laughs> he hoarsely exclaimed. <laughs> you got problems, man, Radio sighed, shaking his head. Wrangler, having been the guy to introduce Skeletor to us, looked guilty, ripping his head and audibly groaning. Meanwhile, Dragon pulled Ninetales close, presumably to remind him of his good fortune and good nature, affording him a solid relationship. But this only served as a twist of the knife <laughs> in Skeletor's perspective. Okay, bud, well, if a character comes along that your character would take a shining to, I began. No, nah, man, I don't think you understand. I don't want to wait, man. I want a girlfriend. <gasps> like... Now! We're in a bar, yeah? He said with the relaxed and lackadaisical calm of a human skeleton in no hurry to get back to his crypt. <laughs> uh, yeah, a cantina, I gently correct. Whatever, man! 
Yeah, I'm gonna look around for a chick, and I ain't gonna stop until I get a girlfriend! <laughs> he exclaims. Bad Astovich rolls his eyes. Can we finish up with my inquiries? Chancellor Velarm said the Count Ma was here. No, man, you can do that later. I've been real patient, bruh. <laughs> Skeletor huffs. Bad Astovich threw his arms up and folded them. Fuck it, go get your cheap thrills. Skeletor's countenance arched into that familiar, relaxed contentedness. Cool. So, how do I get a girlfriend here? Deciding to at least give him a chance, I say, Okay then, um, give me a charisma check. A what? He cocks his head to the side. Charisma check? You know, to carouse around the cantina and get the lay of the land, I supply for him. Oh, yeah, cool, <laughs> he mumbles. <laughs> he rolls his dice, and it is a natural one. Of course, natural ones are only guaranteed failure in combat, not necessarily other roles. Dang, well, what's your charisma bonus, I ask. Uh, it's nine, he says. What? The table collectively exclaims. Nine? I gasp. Yeah, this number right here. He points to his charisma. His base charisma, not his charisma score. Oh, uh, that's your total score. Your modifier or, or bonus is next to that, I say. The rest of the table slumping in relief. Oh, minus one. He comes back. <laughs> that's a zero. <laughs> Skeletor's antics were individually not really worthy of their own story, but multitudinous in number. This last one had made me want to give just a little bit of retribution. <laughs> that being said, I am not entirely proud of my actions, but his later actions would make these such actions feel justified. Well, with a role like that, the best you can hope for is a gun-gun prostitute hanging out in the corner. <laughs> About five deep into death sticks with a rasp to match. God, this episode's gonna kill my voice, dude. <laughs> hey, you sir, wanna have the a good a good time? <laughs> the gun gun lady of the night greeted him. The whole table was snickering. But Skeletor, to everyone's surprise and revulsion, smiled as if he had found his true love. <laughs> sure, wanna go upstairs? He asked with a satisfied smirk. Taken aback, I find myself hoisted by my own petard, <laughs> as I was forced to imagine his character of nine charisma and a gun-gun cougar shacking up. You got fifteen credits! Me's a hot commodity! She trills at him. <laughs> he forks over the cash and I fade to black when they sneak into a closet. I figured with that out of his system, he'd be more tolerable. <laughs> no. <laughs> Skeletor wound up talking this gun gun prostitute into going with us. <laughs> oh, hooray. The session ended with them finding a lead, no thanks to Skeletor. Of course, next session, out of the blue again, while Wrangler's character is making his rolls to go into hyperspace. Hey guys, what's a gun gun anyways? <gasps> All heads, at once, turn towards Skeletor. <laughs> You're like, shitting us, right? Dragon groans. Bad Astovich scowls at this point. Dude, have you ever seen Star Wars? <laughs> <laughs> Never thought I'd hear Arnold say that. Uh, no? Skeletor mumbles with a shrug. Cricket chirp dot wave. The entire table is dead. Freaking... Silent. Ah, <laughs> uh, have you played any of the games? I ask, bamboozled at this point. Episode one, Pod Racer. Skeletor says, "God help us." Hey, that game was pretty cool though. <laughs> but yeah, it's not gonna teach you much about Star Wars lore. Excuse me, excuse me. I got a little question for you. Radio says, pyramiding his fingers in mock deep thought. What? Fell demon of blissful ignorance possess you to join a Star Wars tabletop game without ever having seen a single fucking Star Wars movie. 
I don't know. <laughs> Skeletor murmured with the carefree shrug of a man who has never had a worry in the world and has never had a single passion. Well, uh, to answer your question, this is a gun gun. I show him a picture of Jar Jar Binks. Only, you know, female, Ninetales adds, with cheap makeup and that huge tongue. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Skeletor nodded in approval at Jar Jar's grinning, thumbs-upping effigy, and silence reigned at the table once again. <laughs> Suddenly, the unorthodoxy of his character came into stark contrast. I mean, I'm hardly one to judge, given my xenophilia, that's a love of the relatively strange and unusual, kind of comes with being a furry, but I have always been restrained in my IRL dealings. Skeletor, carefree creature that he is, had no such restraints. <laughs> anyway, I think that's it for the night. I'm calling the game for the night, I announce. I needed a break from this nonsense. Ah, but we are not done yet, friends. Stay tuned for the next episode, where we see the lawyer exercise his specialty and talents in a gripping courtroom drama. <laughs> next episode, Law and Order, The Outer Rim. Dude's gotta be bullshitting, right? <laughs> Who hasn't seen Star Wars in this day and age? It has gripped the entire world with, you know, the, the most recent episodes coming out. They weren't very good, aside from episode 7. But you can't stay away from the chatter, you can't avoid the memes. At no point was this guy like, huh, I'm kinda curious as to what all this is about. <laughs> I guess not, he's just like, whatever, I'm gonna play some tabletop. Which I guess, you know, he was faking it till he makes it type of shit, like... <laughs> he made it to session six without anybody realizing that he hadn't seen it, so... I guess he's doing a decent job. <laughs> but yeah, that's probably why he just rolled a human. <laughs> Keep it low-key. Even then, after six sessions, you think he wouldn't have, like, Googled some of this stuff? What's a Jawa? <laughs> Maybe he did, he just... Couldn't wait for the end of the session to Google what a Gungan is. And I thought it is Gungan, like G-U-N-G-A-N, but uh, OP spells it Gun Gun, so I don't know. I'm, I'm not too sure. I did see those early Star Wars movies, but that was like a long time ago, you know, in a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. Oh, Lord. I'm grateful that I didn't have to do the high-pitched Skeletor voice the entire time, but it seems like the wheezy one is a little bit harder. I have to keep my throat wet in order to continue doing it. I'm going to leave some bloopers of me dying at the end of the video, I guess. <laughs> oh, but let us see what the next episode brings. I'm sure there's plenty of cringe to be had by all, and I'm still hungry. <laughs> so let's hop into it. Zooka's Gaming Group Tales, the Skeletor miniseries, episode two, OBJECTION! <laughs> Phoenix Wright and Law and Order in the same shit, this is, this is just too class. Zooka, you seem to know what I like, you cut me right to my core, sir. <laughs> Hello friends, stay a while and listen. This be the second installation of the Skeletor miniseries, detailing the Luciferian descent from grace that our gaunt fedora-tipping guest experienced. Speaking of hat-tipping, permit me to tip mine to Red X, Fun With Failure, and Hell Freezer, and the newly discovered Reddit Brew. Ooh, dang. Up-and-comers? <laughs> also, Red X viewers, seriously, go check out his wife's gardening channel. Aw, oh, I do appreciate that, man. She pours a lot of passion into that, and it shows in the videos. So, this second tale chronicles the moment when the group realized Skeletor didn't have the foggiest idea what the frack he was doing, and that he either didn't care or couldn't be bothered. We've got the cast list. Looks relatively unchanged. We've also got the stage. Also relatively unchanged. And so the troop is ready, and the stage is set for the Skeletor miniseries episode 2, Law and Order, Outer Rim. Star Fox 64 stage start chime. <laughs> we go and need luck, I tell ya. So, the group was ten sessions in and going strong, but while pursuing the elusive Count Maul across the Outer Rim, they'd come across the planet Corellia, Han Solo's homeworld, 
Read the Han Solo trilogy, not the audiobooks, because those are like badly abridged. DM me, I can hook you up. Ooh, I might. <laughs> and they found themselves in a spot of trouble. Apparently, Count Maul had pulled strings to get the Corellian authorities, Corsac, to detain the group and put them on trial for the destruction of a factory that crippled a sector of Corellian industry. Now out of game, I did this as a setup to challenge the characters in a battlefield of persuasion, sleuthing and making sense of clues, like a Phoenix Wright game. Killa! I hope OP will join my Discord so we can get uh, <laughs> some games going or something. I think I'd like this. Also, I did this specifically because we had a supposed liar in our group. Lovely Skeletor. As a game master, I like to set up scenarios in such a way so that every player character has a chance to uniquely shine. I want players to feel like their efforts are worth it. Sometimes they fall short, but the point is that they had the opportunity to use their character's unique strengths. So for our own resident Phoenix wrong, <laughs> I had set up a courtroom drama. Skeletor had several gems of ideas that he wheezed to the group, one of which involved holding the judge's family hostage. <laughs> <laughs> laughing all the while. <laughs> Jesus. Our hero, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> God. <laughs> the case gets about halfway through, with everyone disseminating clues and hammering out details for their defense. Everyone, that is, with the exception of Skeletor, who sat in the very chair that Turtle had once colonized and fed his addiction to pay to incrementally advance phone games. I think that chair is cursed, dude. <laughs> Whoever sits in it's a shitty gamer. It must be the most comfortable chair in the world. <laughs> Eventually, I specifically called upon him, stirring him from his glaze-eyed stupor. Hey, Skeletor, nobody else knows this detail about Corellian law. Roll me a knowledge law check, please, I ask. He cocked his head in confusion. Oh, what? <laughs> You took the skill Knowledge Law, right? I ask, feeling that familiar pebble of dread in my stomach that preludes to damage to my intelligence. <laughs> he studies his character sheet. Uh, no! <laughs> he grunts. <laughs> Dragon face palms, his head sliding forward down his forearms until it hit the table with a thud. <laughs> Ninetales is blinking. What? <laughs> she squeaks. Bad Astovich smiles jovially from ear to ear. He strolls over to Skeletor and leans down. May I see your sheet? He asks, in uncharacteristic gentleness. He looks it over and begins shaking his head. Unfucking believable Skeletor chuffs. What? <laughs> and he laughs. Out of the blue, just no reason. <laughs> Bad Astovich hands the sheet back. He's got no ranks in knowledge law. And one rank in trade, lawyer. The table stares. Wrangler looks like he wants to sink into the floor and just disappear, having brought this zombie among us. <laughs> I clear my throat and dramatically pipe up. <clears throat> well, were you a paralegal? A pair of what? <laughs> he asks. <laughs> John, John, what the fuck gift? <laughs> I compose myself. You can still make the roll attempt. Your exposure to law has allowed you to pick up enough that we'll say you've got a rank of that knowledge, I say, throwing Skeletor an extremely generous bone. <laughs> Is that a pun? <laughs> uh, see, pun indeed intended. <laughs> We're on the same wavelength. <laughs> he rolls, not looking at it. Well, he tells his magic girl waifus on his phone in what manner they should attack. <laughs> Radio coughs loudly. More magical sounding twinkly noises. Slumsy looks like he's about ready to erupt in laughter so he doesn't just go insane. Wrangler looks like he's regretting his life decisions that led up to this moment. <laughs> Dragon and Ninetales are just watching impatiently. <clears throat> Skeletor, what did you roll? I pipe up. Oh, um... Seventeen! Skeletor mumbles, then laughs at nothing. <laughs> Plus one! Ninetales exclaims. Seventeen? <laughs> Skeletor peers at her from beneath the fedora, a suspicious glint in his sunken eye. Yeah, but plus one makes it eighteen. Dragon spells it out for him. 
but I, I rolled a 17. <laughs> Skeletor begins to use whatever burnt out neurons he still possesses to figure out what is being said to him. Oh, so 17 plus 1 is 18. <laughs> you stupid. <laughs> What's 9 plus 10? 21. You stupid. Hallelujah. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, you know that there's an older case involving this very situation, and the defendants prove their innocence with invoking an obscure piece of Corellian law pertaining to off-worlders. You could use that, or you could continue using the defense that you've been building. Roll me trade lawyer. Skeletor blinks in confusion for a moment. That one-sentence info dump, overwhelming the faculties he has left, after investing whatever else he has into using tens of real-world dollars to buy clothing for imaginary women in a game that would go defunct within a year of this taking place. <laughs> but I'm a lawyer, he objects, and then laughs randomly. <laughs> I don't want to trade that! <laughs> what? What planet is this dude from? He must be malnourished or something. His, his brain is atrophied. <laughs> Slumsy, who is the first to admit that he isn't one of the world's greatest thinkers, is at least cunning and clever in his own right, and he looks like he's about to launch himself at Skeletor in a frenzy. No, dude, I mean, you gotta roll the die using the skill Trade Lawyer, I desperately try to explain to him. Oh, so that'll solve our problem? <laughs> he asks staring blankly at his sheet. Uh, it won't hurt your chances, I sigh. He rolls. What's 20 mean? Hey, all right, man. Natural 20 plus one gets... That's 21! <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> 21? Skeletor exclaims exceedingly pleased with his mad math skills with the Z for the cool kids. <laughs> Gold star, Skeletor. Gold star. <laughs> uh-huh. And that's going to give you an edge when you present your defense. So what do you want to do with the info that you've drawn up, I ask. Skeletor slumps into his seat. I don't know. You guys keep shooting down my ideas, he says, morose. Badastovich is doing his signature vein bulge. You wanted to drop the glimmerstim spider we caught in the fucking courtroom? How would that have helped? Ninetales pipes up. He also wanted to kidnap the judge's daughter. <laughs> yeah, cause then she could be my girlfriend too. <laughs> win win. <laughs> Skeletor says and laughs. Stop laughing at things, you weird alien man. <laughs> I chose that moment to channel Jan Jan, the space syphilis ridden Gungan lady of the night who our dashing space lawyers swept off her flippers. But Mason loves you. Mason no want to share. I want to hear him, babe. <laughs> he gives a casual shrug. <laughs> It's devolving so beautifully. <laughs> Slumsy gives Wrangler a dirty look, having not forgiven him for introducing Skeletor to us all. I sigh a bit. <sighs> okay, just whatever you guys want to plan, I need a moment. <laughs> I excuse myself to drain the lizard and contemplate how to save the game for the rest of the group. I come on back down after nibbling on some gum to ease my nerves, and I find Skeletor pacing around angrily. It'll work, he sneers. Oh, lordy. <laughs> what have I just walked into? You're deluded, and Zuka would never okay it. You're going to die before you get out the door, Radio growls. This is really boring. I hate this part, Skeletor grumbles. Well, that hurt. I whipped up a whole session for you to shine, but go off, I guess. I come down in full and sit at my place, taking a deep breath. Okay. So, what's your defense? Long story short, they stonewalled Skeletor and roleplayed extensively, figuring out how to prove the group's innocence. Dragon particularly shined when he hacked into Corsac's computer and rebuilt corrupted data that proved Count Maul blew up the factory, delivering it in a sufficiently dramatic fashion via his protocol droid, 
who spoke for his character, because he was a Jawa, remember? All the while, Skeletor kept whiling away his time and money on his waifu army, <laughs> only coming out of his near comatose state to remind us that he had his own ship! <laughs> ah yes, the Pursuer class enforcement ship that he had swindled off of a deeply depressed Twi'lek, who he made even more depressed via dialogue. In addition to this ship, he had an assassin droid as a bodyguard, who contributed more to combat than Phoenix Wrong did, as to be expected. <laughs> I mention this all because it will be important in the next penultimate episode of the Skeletor miniseries, in which he becomes the punchline at the end of every Dark Lawyer joke ever told. <laughs> Thanks for reading, hope you have a splendid, neckbeard bereft day, and that these tales are the only exposure to folks such as this that you experience. See you next time. It is shocking to me that somebody could possibly be like this inept. <laughs> it seems like Turtle at least understood how to play the game, but <laughs> Skeletor is just like completely out of the loop. I don't know why he showed up. He hasn't seen the movies, he doesn't seem to understand anything. I mean, he lied to the entire group. He's like, yeah, I've been playing tabletop for six years. <laughs> really, bro, where is any of that experience? It's fine if you're new. Just say that you're new, and I'm sure people will be happy to teach you the game, but <laughs> putting on airs and just being like, yeah, you know, I'm the best tabletop player ever. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> God, what a ride, dude. I don't think I have ever played with anybody this bad. <laughs> <laughs> I've been the bad player before. I, I kind of space out and, you know, roll a bad character and fuck up just <laughs> kind of to see how I can get myself out of bad situations. But I do try to get myself out of bad situations in an intelligent way, not kidnapping a judge's daughter while we're on trial. Like, <laughs> are you insane? Are you trying to get the entire party killed? I think this is just like, you know, his mom forced him out of the house or something so he'd finally get some fucking social interaction. <laughs> She's like, somebody invited you somewhere? Go, please, for, for the love of God, just go. <laughs> I would kill for a couple of hours alone in my own house. <laughs> I don't know if he lives with his parents or what, but given his ineptitude, I, I can only assume as much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm super thirsty for the third part. There is another Burger Beard uh, tale with the song in it, so I'll get that up relatively soon, but I've been off wandering other subreddits, as you may know, so I hope that you've been enjoying those. I've basically been trying to not burn myself out completely on Neckbeard stories, because I've been pushing Neckbeard stories for like a couple months at this point. So, you know, stepping back, checking out some meme subreddits, some, some other types of stories is healthy for the brain parts if I want to continue making content. And I definitely do. And what kind of pal tries to sell us out to the Separatist clones? He's my clone baby. <laughs> Zuka's Gaming Group Tales, the Skeletor miniseries, episode three, Old Republic Blues. Goodness, we have come a long way, haven't we? We've explored the depths of Burger Beard's foolishness, followed him as he found love, bounced back to Skeletor and discovered that he was a ghoul in geek's clothing, and now we're here, the third of four installments in the Skeletor miniseries. I bend my knee and stoop my head in respect to Red X. Oh my goodness, please, arise. <laughs> First to read these tales, and perhaps not the last. Maybe. Moonhorse was reading some Caustic Fox tales. He's covering the D saga now, so who knows where this could go? Red X is also a man who once shared a homeland with I, but like myself, escaped the burgeoning insanity. <laughs> California, rip. And yeah, I loved episode one Pod Racer too, but it's not exactly rich in lore. It, it tells you all you need to know, Zuka, okay? You cannot beat Zebulba. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> What's this? A universe where a bunch of weirdos race around in chariots made from jet engines? And you cannot beat Sebulba. <laughs> I don't know why that voice line is stuck in my head so hard. Uh, included in this tale is a picture of the very chair in which Turtle and Skeletor nested. After extensive shampooing, 
It serves ably as a chair in which I read the literary works of humanity and get away from electronic distractions. There's some headphones right there, bro. You gotta get those electronic distractions out of there. No, but it does look like a pretty comfy chair. It's nice and big for big beardy butts. <laughs> she's got stains, but she's the comfiest chair in the house. Looks pretty comfy, but there are still some rumors circulating around that it is cursed. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that it's doing better these days. Anyways, this next entry catalogs the fall of Skeletor's character, an event that serves as a prelude to the fall of the man himself, not just from Grace and the gaming group, but from the status of a free man. What? <laughs> oh, now you got me hooked. See, by the time Skeletor had come around, our group's experiences with Burgerbeard had reduced our tolerance for nonsense to just a thimble's worth. Skeletor was irritating, but wasn't truly awful. Until, that is, a dark and stormy night, when we learned what darkness lurked in Skeletor's heart. <laughs> oh, you got me hooked already, man. Don't build it up too much. <laughs> And especially after watching the He-Man Christmas special, I believe that I would vastly prefer the company of Skeletor's namesake to the frightening fedora-wearing lich who haunted us. <laughs> Our dramatis personae, we've got Skeletor, Zuka, Badastovich, Dragon, Ninetales, Radio, Slumsy, Wrangler, the gang is all here. The stage is also the same as in the first couple of tales, so... That is linked in the description if you'd like to hear me read all of that. But I'm eager to get into it, as I said. So the troop is essentially ready, and the stage is mostly set for the Skeletor miniseries, Episode 3, Old Republic Blues. Star Fox 64 stage start chime. Good luck. Side note, back when I was a kid and playing Star Fox 64, I always thought what we heard upon starting a level was Embark. <laughs> <laughs> that felt so unique and cool and epic to me. Come to find out, it's good luck. Which is nice and all, but I don't know. Just feels like a little air was let out of that preconceived notion. Anyways, on with the show. I think Embark would be better too, because General Pepper's like a dog, right? <laughs> it's layered, but oh well. As mentioned above, twas a dark and stormy night when Skeletor surprised us all with... Ah, uh, but I get ahead of myself. <laughs> Let's paint the events from the borders of the picture. So, the group had pursued Count Maul across the Outer Rim, captured him, and learned that he was supplying the Outer Rim Confederacy with vast fleets, armor, weapons, and other such resources. He had used the Force to lock away partitions of his mind, so that even he himself couldn't remember where he found what he did, saying that the knowledge was dangerous and he accepted defeat. Of course, just because Count Maul accepted defeat doesn't mean that the rest of the Confederacy did, so Chancellor Organa, voted in to replace the freshly assassinated Chancellor Valarum, tasked our heroes with sussing out the truth and pulling out the Confederacy's teeth. <laughs> Count Maul warned that the path they chose to walk would take them to cross paths with the dark side in more ways than one. But still, our heroes pressed on in spite of these warnings, the first hint of the trail led them to walk the path of Ravan, a Jedi of the Old Republic who had purportedly fallen to the dark side, only to redeem herself. Her fall was purely calculated, and she knew the heavy cost that it would incur, and part of that cost was a conquest of the Republic under the guise of the Sith fleet, something she would never have been able to do as a Jedi, leading the Republic Navy against the Mandalorian invasion. The path of Ravan led them eventually to the location of a terrible instrument of the dark side, an edifice called the Star Forge, which fed on emissions from a sun to build vast fleets and resources. It outlived its creators, who lived on in legend as the Infinite Empire. It was destroyed, but over time had rebuilt itself, until Count Maul, desperate to protect the Outer Rim, found the terrible thing and realized too late that it was influencing the would-be defenders of the Outer Rim worlds to make war on their neighbors, and that his sacking of Alderaan had dealt the economy of the Republic a blow from which it was struggling to recover. He had meant to push them off balance, not completely topple them. All of this flew completely over Skeletor's head, mind you. He just wanted some action! <laughs> In more ways than one. <laughs> 
or action of the martial persuasion. As Jan Jan, the Gungan, hey, I spelled it right this time. Are you happy, Leon? <laughs> Just blame autocorrect, bro. <laughs> Jan Jan saw to it that he had plenty of action between the space sheets on his flying shoebox of a ship. <laughs> Seriously, the Pursuer class enforcer ship looks like a shoebox with an outrigger. I am so serious, you guys. Google that thing. Here's the picture that I found. <laughs> anyway, the group in their Citadel class cruiser named the Shadow Chaser. Google that. To quote Hey Arnold Stanky Peterson, it's pretty Arnold. <laughs> and Skeletor in the Heart of Gold. Yes, he actually managed to make a geeky reference after my description of the ship made him think of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. They left their ships in orbit and crash-landed in their mini-shuttles on the homeworld of the Infinite Empire, in the same system that the Star Forge occupies. The planet projects a power-nullifying field from a temple-like structure. Anyone who's ever played the absolute gem of a game, Knights of the Old Republic, knows what's going down. That is a gem of a game, my goodness. <laughs> Gotta replay that one soon. The group met with the violent, cannibalistic remnants of the Infinite Empire, Rakatans, who once held the galaxy by the throat some 50,000 years prior. Insert Mass Effect joke here. What can you tell me about the Reapers? <laughs> the group managed to negotiate with them for entrance to the temple and were guided through the vast stone corridors. Skeletor and his faithful bodyguard droid began to evaluate the Rakatan numbers. Uh-oh. So the group had left Dragon's Jawa character and his team of astromech droids, with a little help from a certain Gungan cougar, to cobble together a ship from all the wrecked vessels laying around the vast beaches, so that they could get back to the Heart of Gold and Shadow Chaser, and as such, the group was without one of their resident voices of reason. I forget what was immediately said, but sometime after deactivating the power dampening field, the group were peacefully on their way out when Skeletor casually withdrew a thermal detonator <laughs> and chucked it into the big chasm that, until it had been turned off, was causing the planet to make ships crash. This, of course, did not please the cannibalistic Rakutens. In point of fact, it made them quite unhappy indeed. <laughs> Badastovich slowly turned his head to where Skeletor was sitting. Skeletor? He calmly asked, What did you just do? Wrangler slapped the top of the table, grabbing his head and letting out inarticulate noises of anger and frustration. So fed up with Skeletor that his ability to parse words had just completely short-circuited. <laughs> Radio looked around at the rest of the group, speaking in character as the Togruta Jedi, who had recently attained the rank of Knight, graduating from Padawan Learner. Friends... He has frequently made his bed. It's time he learned to sleep in it. Run! <laughs> I eyed everyone at the table, knowing what this would mean. Are you sure? I asked. Radio looked across to Skeletor, who couldn't be bothered to pay attention even during the action time. The magic twinkling sound of spending hundreds of dollars. <laughs> As I had just recently learned, on his mobile waifu game, not just dozens, filled the air. Radio's expression hardened. I'm sure. He looked around the pensive faces of the group. We're all sure. <laughs> I just love how Skeletor's not paying attention to any of this shit. <laughs> just sitting with his magical waifus on his phone. And then he's going to be like, what? I died. <laughs> That's so unfair. <laughs> the group, who I had been rewarding for avoiding unnecessary bloodshed, chose not to fight the angered Rakutans, and left Skeletor's character behind, who had already initiated combat. Using the Force to speed up their expeditious retreat, the last they saw of Skeletor's lawyer and his combat droid was a rapidly encroaching wave of Rakutans, already tearing him limb from limb for the stew pot. <laughs> Phoenix Wrong was now Alien Chow. Rip, F in the chat, boys. <laughs> it was at this point, that Skeletor, who had been rolling one failed attack after another, watched as the Rakatan mob took its turn and just completely overwhelmed him. He could have fled with his colleagues, but he chose to try and fight several dozen of these things. <laughs> Big balls, no brain. <laughs> the whole group would have smoked them, but not so much alone Skeletor and his droid. 
I saw an expression of anger finally twist his ghoulish countenance. <laughs> Hooray, some emotion. He threw his arms up. What the fuck, you guys? You left me to die! What kind of friends are you? There was a moment of quiet at the table. Wrong thing to say, Skeletor. Wrong thing to say. Wrangler spoke first. What kind of friend steals credits from the group fund to buy a custom droid that only protects you? Dragon chimed in. Yeah, and what kind of friend tries to sell my wife to Durger the Hut? Ninetales made a little humph at that, folding her arms and sticking her nose into the air to emphasize her husband's point. Bad Estevich leaned over the table. Yeah, yeah, and what kind of pal tries to sell us out to the Separatist clones? Side note, my alternate universe had a different take on the Clone Wars, namely that the Separatists had custom-made horrific monstrosities, huge custom-built soldiers, cloned from normally peaceful, if giant, people, and they unleashed them upon a poorly defended Republic, which was forced to conscript anyone who could hold a blaster or a vibroblade, forcing the peaceful Jedi into the horrors of war, which dwindled their number to a scant few. All by wicked design, to be sure. Anyways, the table continued to air Skeletor's dirty laundry, all his little irritations and backbites coming back to haunt him like a post-mortem trial. <laughs> he responded to the litany of his sins by kicking the ottoman that goes with the easy chair up into the air, making it sail over Badastovich's head, putting a dent into my wall, and shattering my Razorback, which is a 40k model, a rhino transport with a giant last cannon on top, the second time that that very model had been wrecked. <laughs> Was this ottoman filled with helium, or is this boy just like super strong? He's got some stringy muscle. <laughs> and the poor Warhammer model, <laughs> it's been there and back again. Bad Astovich responded by leaping to his feet, and before Radio or myself could stop him, walloped Skeletor across his bony chops. Settle the fuck down, you moron! He roared. Skeletor reached for his Swiss army knife, fumbling with it while swearing up a storm. A surprise to us all, since he hadn't expressed any sort of emotion or passion for... anything. <laughs> Re he wheezed his dry, rattling battle cry as he continued to try and get his thumbnail under the notch <laughs> to pull the two and a half inch long blade from the knife. <laughs> 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 That's so ridiculous. By now, Radio had bolted upright and shoved Bad Astovich aside to slap the knife out of Skeletor's gaunt hands. Okay, calm the hell down, man! He snipped. At this point, I gently released one hand from the can of pepper spray that I had readied, <laughs> seeing that it wouldn't be needed, and the other from my phone, having put in 911. Skeletor began yelling, You screwed me over, man! You left me to get fucking eaten! Radio shook his head in disgust. You played your own damn self, son. Kept screwing around and monkey wrenching our plans. Wouldn't work with us on anything. You just came up with the most violent ideas you could, if you ever bothered to do anything. Skeletor let out a combination growl wheeze. You didn't let me do anything, he countered. I finally broke my silence. I'm sorry, bud, but I frequently offered you chances to get involved. You kept playing on your phone, and hey, that's fine, dude. If that's your jam, it's your jam. But we're all here to play Star Wars tonight. Listen, you are not the first person to lose a character. It sucks, but it happens. We can whip up a new character, and you can use what you've learned to be a better player. I wasn't too great at decision-making and role-playing when I first started, I offered, smiling amicably. Skeletor stared at me. But... I've gamed for six years, <laughs> he objected. <laughs> and what have you learned? I slumped, just having no idea what to say at this point. He wanted the prestige of being a tabletop gamer, but wasn't willing to dedicate an ounce of effort into immersing himself or at least admitting that he didn't know what the hell he was doing. Do you still want to make a new character at least? <laughs> I offered. <laughs> Nah, I think I'm done. <laughs> Thank God. He mumbled, sitting back down in the chair and returning to his twinkling waifu game, delivering unto his ears siren calls of simulated affection in return for not-so-simulated currency. 
the rest of the game continued, with Dragon's Jaw while using spit, bailing wire, and happy thoughts to construct a ship that finally got them back into orbit on their vessels. They informed Jan Jan, who the group had cultivated a begrudging respect for, after she opened some of the Outer Rim's seedier doors to them, and had bailed them out of an encounter with the very angry Hut Swoop race organizer. We said that her prince had fallen on the world below, sparing her the grisly details, and telling her that the Heart of Gold belonged to her now, and that she could do with it as she wished. Misa come this far? Misa gonna see this through! was her enthusiastic response. The group had cultivated more respect and affection for an imaginary gun gun prostitute than for the Weasley man who had hired her services. <laughs> Granted, I admit to trying to flesh out and breathe life and character into more permanent NPCs into whatever game I run, but it was still pretty touching to see. Skeletor grumbled from his nest on my chair. It's my ship! <laughs> Now it's Jan Jan's, Wrangler chimed in. Come on, guys, don't kick downward, I urged. I'd had a bad feeling starting to grow in my gut since Skeletor's blowout, that sense that you get before lightning strikes. As I held my cat in one hand, waving my guests of the night out the door, that sense of unease still hadn't left me. And it wasn't until the following Saturday that I realized what those bad feelings were about. Stay tuned, time-weathered friends, readers, fellow Americans, friends from distant lands, for the last tale of Skeletor is the next one to be told, and we will see the events that lead him to a long stay behind bars. Gene Starwind better get ready to wave. See you soon. And readers, both strictly visual and the few, the proud, the oral readers, you have my deepest and humblest gratitude for taking a look at these chronicles. I'm very happy that it's proving to be entertaining, and I hope to see you next time. Coming up next, the Skeletor miniseries episode 4, We're Not Here to Hurt You. Not physically, at least. <laughs> oh my god, does he actually go to jail? This is, this is too much, dude. He's got quite a temper on him, which is something that I honestly didn't expect. I think he's got flat effect, you know, which is like that thing that serial killers have where you can't really discern any sort of expression on their face unless they're like willfully making that expression. So hopefully we can still end up having a laugh at what happens next, but man, this dude is more dangerous than I thought. How can you be mad that your character died when you weren't even fucking paying attention? <laughs> He's like, yeah, I'm gonna fight all these dudes. I'm sure my people will back me up. Well, didn't you hear? They fled. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if you pulled your nose out of Magical Waifu game, you would have discerned what was going on and fled as well. Possibly lived. And Zuka being ever the pragmatist, he's like, do you want to roll another character? I know you're fucking horrible at this game and we can hardly stand pushing you through it, but... <laughs> <laughs> if you want to roll another one, I guess we'll let you. I think it's super interesting that he returned the next week, so... I guess we'll have to suss out his alibi in the next story, so... Let's go ahead and jump on into it. Zuka's Gaming Group Tales, the Skeletor miniseries, episode 4, the finale. We're not going to hurt you. <laughs> Cometh now the end of our time with Skeletor. Aww. <laughs> the man who knew nothing of tabletop was too egotistical to accept gently offered help and made a general ass of himself on many an occasion. But, up until the Ottoman flinging of last episode, he was, to quote the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, mostly harmless. <laughs> Dramatis Persona has changed a bit. We've got Skeletor, the sorry son of a gun who instituted a series of events that ruined the year for several people. Zuka, Master of Ceremonies, guy who ran the majority of the games during the time Skeletor was present, the events of this last entry saw me bear witness to a cascading series of horrible decisions that stacked up on each other like a drunken game of Jenga, if the blocks were replaced with slivers of gelatinized urine. <laughs> what a pissy time! Dragon, the guy who would later provide court testimony. Ninetales, lead of the search party. <laughs> what? This is getting deep, bro. Radio, victim of secondhand shenanigans. For the record, he's also a dead ringer for Gerard from Storage Wars. Jared? Gerard? Whatever, I don't watch Storage Wars. <laughs> Slumsy! 
had mine and Wrangler's back during the more tense moments, and Wrangler, the shopping cart cowboy, also the guy who found himself the unwitting victim of a crime that robbed him of every penny of his savings. Really? Horde Prime. <laughs> Skeletor's grandma, and the one who pushed the first domino of legal action. The stage, the quiet central coast town of Santa Maria, known for its perfection of tri-tip barbecue, proximity to the finest locations on the central coast, farming and ranching excellence, and strawberry fields forever. <laughs> if you've seen the movies Cowboy Up or Sideways, then you've seen my former homeland. The place that I grew up and a place that I deeply miss. You could go back, OP, just for a visit. <laughs> the troop is ready. The stage is set. For the Skeletor miniseries, episode 4, the finale. We won't hurt you! Star Fox 64 stage start chime. Good luck. The week after the instance where Skeletor's character met his end in a Rakatan stew pot, I welcome my friends and guests back into my home only for Wrangler to darn near kick the door down in a fit of mad rage. That bastard, that rat fucker, that cock-biting, overbitten, tramp stamping lipstick-looking, non-denominational son of an Irish setter! Wrangler bellowed, circling in the middle of my living room, flailing his arms around as he found his small, wiry frame too meager to contain the rage that was thrumming through every cell of his being. Wrangler, it should be noted, is on the spectrum, and a guy that I had met during my 4-H days during the county fair. Over the years, myself and the group had helped him cultivate his social skills and thicken his skin to the rigors of the world, and he has very rarely expressed outright rage like this. We'd put a lot of work into this dude, and it was immensely disheartening to see him in such a state of overwhelming distress. He was literally hopping mad now. Bud, what the heck's wrong? I asked him putting a hand on his shoulder to help him ease out of murder-death-kill mode. <laughs> that two-time dirty son of a bitch! He stole it! He stole everything! Wrangler screamed. Radio leaned up, frowning. You want to share the deets with the rest of the class? Slumsy cracked his knuckles. It was fucking Skeletor, wasn't it? Wrangler sniffled, nodding. Radio stood up from the couch, something he rarely does, for it is a couch so singularly comfortable as to be classifiable as a really wide throne. Buttery, black Italian leather, high-tech lattice cushioning, ensuring that if a cannonball were dropped from an airplane onto the sofa next to you, your posterior's tactile senses wouldn't register so much as a tremor. And this majestic piece of furniture I got for $35 reduce <laughs> at an estate sale. What a deal, dude. Reminds me of the porno couch that we found uh, behind the studios in Burbank. <laughs> Black leather, it was super nice. We dragged it home. But yeah, considering the studios we found it behind and the reputation Burbank has, I'm pretty sure it was a porno couch <laughs> at one point. So for Radio to disengage his backside from this divine piece of furniture the angels had named Sofa <laughs> and resume standing, an act that gives his bad knee no small amount of deep, gnawing pain, this means that Dung has officially manifested, and quite possibly hit the fan. <laughs> or if you prefer the layman's nomenclature, shit has gotten real, and also quite possibly hit the fan. <laughs> what happened, man? Radio asked as he drew close. Wrangler wiped his eyes after withdrawing his glasses. Skeletor, I... I needed to hide my money from my little brother. He, he kept stealing it, so I asked Skeletor to look after it and... Uh, haven't you ever heard of a bank, dude? Or, like, the credit union right outside your store? Dragon asked, despondent that Wrangler had once again played himself. Well, I'm sorry, I didn't think of that, okay? Wrangler hissed. Easy, bud. So, what? He won't give you your money back? I asked. He said he won't! He, he already spent half of it! Wrangler exclaimed. How much did you give him? Ninetales asked, patting Wrangler's shoulders to comfort him and calm him down. Three and a half grand! Wrangler snipped. The room fell silent. Dude, seriously? Fucking bank next time! Let's go! Slumsy said, grabbing his coat, a look of determination on his face. We're gonna get your fucking money back from that lanky shit heel! I headed straight for my front door, keys in hand. Amen that one, I affirmed. I'll drive. Where's he live? Radio asked as we power walked out to the driveway. 
I leaped into Godspeed and turned over the SUV's engine. With his grandma hoard prime in that retirement village off Bradley, across from the high school, Wrangler explained. Heh, <laughs> loser, <laughs> Radio chortled, as we dramatically peeled out and drove like the devil himself was swiping at our heels with his pitchfork. I mean, not that. We didn't do that. We responsibly drove at a safe speed to the aforementioned village. <laughs> Don't want to incriminate yourself. Let me do the talking, I told Wrangler as we all stood outside the door. True enough, the place was a pleasant-looking house in a village whose residents were chiefly senior citizens and retirees. Technically speaking, Skeletor wasn't even supposed to be living there. I later learned that this guy was completely disowned by his own parents, but his grandma took him in on the condition that he look after her in her twilight years. This sweet, stereotypically kindly-looking old woman answers the door, smiling cheerfully. Oh my, hello. Are you some of Skeletor's friends? Horde Prime asks. <laughs> I love that you call her Horde Prime. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. <laughs> Smiling in that saccharine way that only sweet old ladies can. Wrangler leans in, hands tightly clenched as he speaks through gritted teeth. Don't worry, we're not gonna hurt you. <laughs> he opened up with that gem of a line. <laughs> <laughs> Massive brain fart. Her eyes suddenly widened as she began regarding us with panic, reaching for her panic pendant, the kind that summons help if she accidentally hurts herself. Whoa, I, I said we're not gonna hurt you! Wrangler was cut off as Slumsy elbowed him in the ribs. I resumed my role as Alpha Geek <laughs> and spoke up after having gotten over the shock of Wrangler's worst opener ever. <laughs> Please pardon my friend, he's fit to be tied, I tell ya. He's got a grievance with your grandson, and he's just not thinking straight. He misappropriated some funds by mistake from Wrangler here, and we just want to know how to resolve the situation without getting the police involved or anything like that. Is Skeletor here right now? Oh, she murmured, seeming to understand what was going on now. He's gotten himself in trouble again, huh? I told him he was heading down a road that I couldn't follow, and... That he'd live to regret it if he didn't shape up. That boy's managed to reclassify laziness. Well, we sure weren't expecting that little rant. <laughs> okay, great. Where is he? Wrangler impatiently pressed. Wrangler, be nice, Ninetales chided him. Easy to say that when you don't have three and a half grand just walking around, Wrangler murmured. Well, he's not here. He went to Blue's electronics store with a yellow label. Said he got a... Oh, he said he got a raise at work. I guess that's not the case, is it? Why didn't you tell us sooner? Wrangler screamed in a sudden panic, tripping over himself as he ran back to the car, just in time to see the flashing red lights of an ambulance and police car come around the corner, sirens wailing. <laughs> Wrangler looks like he wants to explode and take Skeletor with him, while everyone is just giving him the stink eye. By the time all is said and done, we're kicked out of the village and given a warning for trespassing and harassment. It took almost an hour to hammer it all out, and between my eloquence and radio's familiarity with police procedure, we did manage to avoid outright penalties, but we were now officially on paper-thin ice. One little bump in the wrong direction, and the local law would come down on our heads like a two-handed gavel blow from Super Mecha Judge Judy. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, I miss Judge Judy. I'm gonna tell you that. <laughs> Wrangler, being the one that Granny Horde Prime fingered, is the troublemaker of our little band of misfits. Wrangler's countenance had turned purple over the course of the whole affair, and I could hear the miniature fireworks display in every capillary in his face exploding. So, did you tell him you're missing money? Dragon asked. No way! They confiscated or something! Wrangler retorted. I I'd never see it again! Dragon threw his arms up in the air, shaking his head as he just walked in a circle. Really, Wrangler? Really? <sighs> Ninetales sighed. I snapped my fingers loudly to keep us from devolving into bickers. Whoa! Easy, everyone. Skeletor is still at large. He doesn't have a bike, and I doubt anyone would give him a ride. We can still beat him to Blue Electronics Store. Blue Electronics Store with yellow tag? Is that Best Buy? Can I say that? <laughs> 
They're not a sponsor, so it's not Best Buy. Definitely not. <laughs> What's the secret to getting people to stop complaining at each other? Common enemy, baby. On the way there, we help Wrangler figure out what he'll say if we deal with the police again. Okay, so one more time, Wrangler. What will you say? Radio prompts him. That I didn't tell him about the missing money because I wanted to handle it internally before bothering the police with it, Wrangler stiffly recited. Yeah, only when you say it, try not to sound like a fucking robot, <laughs> Radio grumbled. <laughs> we pull up in the parking lot of the store and we ask around after Skeletor's whereabouts. Hey, have you seen an emaciated, unhealthy looking guy <laughs> who looks like someone screwed up a zombie incantation halfway through? And also, he wears a fedora. <laughs> My words, verbatim. <laughs> God. <laughs> They're just going to point you to Skid Row. Although, I don't think uh, heroin addicts usually wear a fedora. That is the classifying feature. <laughs> oh, yeah. Guy came through earlier, grabbed a Super Duper 90X gaming laptop from Super Duper Computer Brand. The cashier comes back without missing a beat. How much did it cost? Wrangler shakily asks. Oh, like 1400 the cashier says. Didn't buy the warranty, though. Not wise. <laughs> Dragon and Ninetales, sensing that Wrangler is about to cause another scene, take him by the arms outside of the store. Slumsy following behind with a watchful eye as he scans the horizon, hoping to perhaps see a spindly scarecrow of a bastard <laughs> beating a hasty retreat. Listen. Our friend there got stolen from by that guy, and we're just trying to confront him about it and get our pal's dough back, I explained. Stole it? Like, out of his pocket? The cashier inquired. More or less, I come back. Why, why didn't he use a bank? <laughs> the blue polo-clad retail worker innocently asked. Fucking right? <laughs> Radio growled. Do you still have a copy of the receipt? I tentatively asked. The cashier stiffens, biting his lips. Uh, we really aren't allowed to give those away. Give me a minute, Radio says. Go check on Wrangler. I head over, glancing over my shoulder at Radio, who's hunched over the counter and speaking in a hushed tone to the cashier before heading outside, being greeted by a wall of miserable noise. <laughs> Why would they sell to that fuck? Wrangler screeched. Why didn't you put your money in the freaking bank? Ninetales prodded. Easy, all. I'm getting pretty tired of playing referee here, so just cool your jets, okay? I snip. Radio comes out with a copy of the receipt in hand and a smirk on his face. How the hell? I begin. Jedi mind trick, he says, tapping his temple. Bullshit. I saw you slip that kid a 20. <laughs> Dragon laughs. We all pile into Godspeed and start back along surface roads, looking for Skeletor's very distinct profile. What we would do if we actually found him was anybody's guess at that point. But find him we did, sitting outside of a popular cafe, sipping a coffee as he fiddled around on a slick gaming laptop. The cock bite opened it, Wrangler seethed, fidgeting like a jumping bean in his seat as we pulled into the parking lot. We all walk up, Dragon and Ninetales keeping a hold on Wrangler's shoulders. Don't do anything dumb, Ninetales murmured. We can still return the computer and get you some of your money back. Well, dumber, Radio snips, still sore about the police warning. Say there, Skeletor, I exclaim in as jovial a manner as my frayed nerves can manage. What's up? <laughs> Skeletor, strung out on whatever improvised pharmaceuticals are tethering him to this mortal plane of existence, leaps to his bony feet, snatching the laptop off the table, and makes a mad dash of about a foot <laughs> before his loose shoelace snags on the table leg, causing him to trip. <laughs> the brand new, non-warrantied, super duper 90 double X laptop goes flying out of Skeletor's hands. <laughs> uh, oh no. Oh, there is some musical accompaniment here, so uh, I'll play that. <laughs> and the corner strikes the concrete first. The case splitting open as a million tiny glittering shards the size of grains of sand burst forth in a beautiful corona of ruined electronics and broken dreams. <laughs> Zuka told me in a PM that it went about 12 yards. <laughs> yeah. 
So this guy must have picked up quite a bit of speed in just one foot. Wrangler lets out a choked gurgle of pure and utter despair, the spectacled eyes flooding with tears of bitter unhappiness and misery as he drops to his knees. Slumsy leaps into action, literally. The guy leaps onto Skeletor's back like an enraged koala <laughs> and grapples that flailing stick insect of a man like he owes him money. Well, he does, owe oh money that is, to Wrangler, if that hasn't been made completely clear by now. <laughs> Ahem, I kneel beside Skeletor. Why'd you do it, man? Wrangler trusted you with that money. Skeletor looks up from his prone position, his fedora having rolled off his head, the top of which I am now seeing for the first time, and beholding an almost occidental style, near perfectly round ring of baldness on the top 38% of his head. <laughs> With the percentage and everything. The rest of his hairline hosting long, greasy strings. Friggin' Crypt Keeper comparisons again, man. He looked at me with the equivalent of a vengeful glower, which is to say the indifferent stare of this alien. Cause you guys didn't back me up, and you let me get eaten by aliens! <laughs> he says, in that nonchalance that one uses when explaining what ought to be patently obvious for all to see. Water being wet, dust being dry, Gordon Ramsay being amazing, etc, etc. <laughs> I gape at him, at a loss. Wait, you stole $3,500 from Wrangler because your butt hurt about your character dying? Bitch, I wish I could do that every fucking time I died! <laughs> Slumsy blurts out. I've died more than all you assholes combined! Don't see me being a fucking thief! Radio shakes his head. You are one pathetic little man, Skelly. Dragon keeps an iron grip on Wrangler, whose head is now purple. His teeth gritted until an audible crack can be heard. Nails dug into his palms to the point of drawing blood. Wrangler takes one step, then his eyes roll back into his head, and he slumps against Dragon, fainting from sheer, overwhelming stress on his already badly taxed system. A wail of sirens signals the arrival of, you guessed it, Santa Maria's boys and girls in blue. Cards are laid on the table, and to make a long and boring part of this tale short, by the end of it, myself, Dragon, Ninetales, Wrangler, and Radio walked out of the police station while Slumsy and Skeletor did not. Slumsy, titanic bro that he was at the time, confessed to power slamming Skeletor and essentially starting the fight. He said he was comfortable with his decision and understood the consequences. He and Skeletor got dinged for public disturbance and got a few dozen hours of community service, and with the help of a lawyer brother of Ninetales, a civil suit saw Wrangler's money returned to him. 18 months later, granted, but still, cash is back in his pocket, with interest. This event saw the beginning of Skeletor's one-man, short-lived crime spree, which eventually got him nabbed for possession, theft, a few other small things that amounted to him doing a nickel at nearby Lompoc. Boy, that kid's gonna get ate up in there. <laughs> <laughs> Can't feel too bad, though. You reap what you sow. Verily, when his character got thrown to the googly-eyed wolves, something snapped in his brittle psyche. These days, he works at a furniture store and lives in the house he inherited from his grandmother when she quietly passed in her sleep one winter morning. Mm, never feel good about the dead grandmas. That part's sad. Goodness only knows how he stays living in a senior village, but... None of us care enough to look into things. After these events, not a game session would go by that Wrangler didn't shoehorn in Skeletor to curse him and the very ground that he trod on. I'm sure there's some kind of profound lesson in here somewhere, but I like to think that the cautionary element to this story is pretty self-evident. <laughs> but just in case you missed it, now, at the end of the Skeletor saga, I tell you this. Choose very carefully the company that you keep. Oh, I thought it was going to be like, use a bank or something. <laughs> Yours is way better, Zuka. <laughs> Thank you for taking this journey down memory lane with me. It is 91% true and accurate with a few minor entertainment embellishments. Ave Maria did in fact not play when Skeletor fumbled the lappy, for instance. <laughs> and alliterations were used for the sake of protecting the privacy of all involved. 
Major gratitude to Red X for being the first to read this saga, and shouts out to Fun With Failure, Hell Freezer, and Reddit Brew. Y'all are the best. Stay tuned, kiddies! <laughs> Tale from the Crypt! <laughs> the next installment of Burger Beard is just around the corner, and I'll have another miniseries to satisfy your questionable tastes. Hey! <laughs> That takes some some amount of offense. The thrilling miniseries of Bubba Beard. Oh my goodness. Bubba Beard? Bugga Beard? I hope I don't get them all mixed up. Anyways, Zuka out. Also, Wrangler finally did get himself a bank account. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank God for that. At the end of the day, things didn't turn out as bad as they could have, I suppose. I don't know how in the hell this dude thought he was just going to walk away with like 3000 plus dollars and everybody's going to be like, okay, no problem. <laughs> Bro, I will hunt you down over $300. I'll hunt you down over $20. Probably not as hard as if I, as if you had stolen $3,000, but God, you got to be so dumb <laughs> to think that this is going to work. And I know, I know that it was just an excuse. He didn't give a shit about that character. It was obvious at every turn that he's just like, yeah, whatever, yeah. Oh, my character's dead? Well, this is a great opportunity for me to steal money from my friend. Poor Wrangler, dude. He kind of reminds me of Osgood, you know, from the Adelaide saga. He's, he's just got a pure heart. He's a real good kid, I can tell, and I hope he stops getting taken advantage of by other people. I do know from past sagas that Slumsy is eventually going to turn and reveal himself as a major neckbeard. Spoilers! <laughs> but I'd like to see how that comes about, because in this story, he, he seems like a freaking hero, but people change over time, little by little. So I think that the moral of the story is quite apt. You need to choose very carefully the company that you keep. And generally, I do, you know, I'll, I'll cut people out in real life for like a first offense. You know what I mean? You said the wrong thing. Well, I can tell we're not going to get along. I'm not going to invest any more time in this friendship. I love them all as humans, but as individual people, mm, I don't know. <laughs> the people that I do love are my subscribers, my commenters, the people that like the videos. Seriously, the biggest heroes pushing this channel forward and making my dreams happen, which is super, super awesome. I hope that one day I can repay you guys in kind. So if you did enjoy the Skeletor series, I do hope that you will like, comment, and or subscribe. Maybe share the video around the first part, the second part. Eventually, I'll compile them all into one video. I know it's probably going to be pretty beefy, but it must be done. Although, I'll probably wait like a good while to actually do it. Because I want it to fall out of people's consciousness first. <laughs> so maybe there's a chance that they'll rewatch the videos. Anyways, <laughs> I hope you'll also check out the links in the description. We got some cool stuff down there. Mr. and Mrs. Red X, that's my wife's channel. Ooh, she published a new vlog recently. I hope you go check that out. We got my personal subreddit, r slash Red X Reads, if you want to share something with me. We got the Amazon affiliate link, which I'm trying to make happen. And we've also got the Teespring, if you want to rock the merch. There's a bunch of other social media stuff down there. You know, Twitter, Discord, Patreon. Facebook, etc., etc. It just goes on and on. <laughs> but probably most important of all are my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous patrons. You're seeing some names on the screen right now. Currently, Josh K is the highest donator, so big shouts out to him first and foremost. But honestly, I would like to thank them all. But especially Zero MMX, Lady Nix, Robert Waits, Pope Squid, Rebecca H, Cider Drinker, Tato Ferret, The Last Shinobi, Mark211, Michael Undead, Aaron W, Mitch, John Hero, Josh K, again, The King, <laughs> Candy Sora, DigiNZ, Fire Drake, Little Lone Wolf, Lone Island, Shara, Marvin the Moth, Ms. Monday, Silent Revolver, JM Coon, Leon Embers, and TSM Kirby. Thank you guys so, so much for supporting the channel monetarily. It is just huge to me. Some stuff does get demonetized every once in a while. It's really nice to be able to lean back on those patrons, not have to worry about it so much. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys so much. If anybody else can support monetarily, it is huge. I thank you in advance. But if you can't right now, don't sweat it too hard, man. I just appreciate you coming on through, hanging out with me, and I hope that you come on back and hang out with me again tomorrow. In order to do so, you'll need to keep yourself safe out there. Wash your hands. That virus is still creeping around, boys. Wash them hands, I'm telling you. But also, don't stress too much. You know, you got to take some time out and do something for yourself today. Something that you personally enjoy. 
Maybe watching another Reddix video. Ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> and always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. I will see you in the next one. And until then, bye-bye.